Hello, Gospel for Grampian listeners. It's Angelina and Myrtle coming to you from work on air in South Africa. Yes, and a wonderful day it is for us today because we are celebrating our 50th episode. My gosh, Myrtle, we are 50 episodes today. We've come a long way a year later. Yeah, a year of jubilee. A year of jubilee. And for our listeners, what Pentecost, 50 means Pentecost. And it refers to the Jewish festival of Shavuot, celebrated on the 50th day after Passover. It is also known as the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of 50 Days. What does 50 mean, Myrtle? According to the numerology of biblical numbers, 50 is a symbol of freedom. Amen. Release and a new cycle. It's like as if, you know, we've been landing this with freedom comes responsibility. We are at the point of release, new cycle, freedom. That is what 50 does. Every 50 years is in the day of atonement of people needed to honor the Jubilee, a day when all the loans and debts were forgotten and forgiven to the one who took a debt. And all the slaves were released and all the things taken were turned back to people they belong to. It's a time of restitution. It is a time of recovery. It is a time of give me back what belongs to me with pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. I want the investment returns on everything that was lost. This is a time of restitution. It was a day when harmony was established. So dear Gospel for Grampian listeners, as Myrtle and I celebrate our 50th episode, we ask you to join us as we celebrate this experience with this beautiful song followed by Holy Communion. See what the Lord has done Can you see what the Lord has done What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. On your wedding day, you're going to sing that. Can you see what the Lord has done? When you walk into that property, can you see what the Lord has done? When that healing happens, what we've been praying. He has brought to pass See what the Lord has done
a beautiful song, Myrtle. What an amazing song in celebrating what the Lord has done for Women of Africa Care. So gospel for Grampian listeners. Little did we know last year this time that we will even reach one episode. We didn't think that we had even one episode to share and to think that we've come through 50 episodes and in celebrating this 50th episode we as individuals have grown in the word of God and in the revelation of God and in relationship with the Lord. Amen. Amen. That is so true Angelina. If I know what God did for us then I, I as a human being it, it is so beautiful. It is so beautiful to know that we've come this far because of his goodness, of his goodness. You know, I just love Jesus so much. I love you, Jesus. And today, Father God, as we take communion, we are celebrating the finished work on the cross. Jesus knew 2,000 years ago that we will be given the opportunity to be as righteous as he is because of what he did on the cross and that we can partake of this wonderful, wonderful communion to remind Jesus, thank you for Pentecost. Thank you that on that day, after 50 days of you ascending, you present us with the greatest gift that humanity could ever have and that is the gift of the Holy Spirit and because of the gift of the Holy Spirit we celebrate 50 episodes because it is the Spirit of the Lord that quickens us that awakens us and that teaches us the things of heaven he helps us and leads us into all truth and righteousness so today Holy Spirit this Holy Communion is celebrating your goodness upon us because of you we have been able to see 50 episodes and we will see another 50 because of you teaching us inspiring us coaching us and mentoring us so as we break bread today we want to say thank you father for sending us precious Jesus. By Jesus' stripes and by the blood of Jesus, we have been healed, we have made been made new, and our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and we get to celebrate nothing is missing, nothing is broken. We are rich, we are healthy, we are strong, we have the mind of Christ, the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, and the understanding of God has established us, and the Spirit of the living God leads us into all truth and righteousness. We follow in the footsteps of Christ because of the Holy Spirit. So to you, Holy Spirit, today, we celebrate you. Thank you for helping us experience 50 episodes on air today. Hallelujah. So gospel for Grampian listeners, if you can, get yourself a communion and join us. Do you want to lead us with a, with a cup? Thank you, Jesus for dying on the cross so that we have, can have forgiveness of sins. Amen. Thank you, Father God, that you are a good God, that you pressed us through 50 episodes with, that we didn't even know we can do. Yep. Thank you, Father God, you are a good God. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the forgiveness in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Gospel for Grampian listeners. A hearty clap to Women of Africa Care celebrating 50 episodes. I was almost tempted to say 50 years. Woo! <laughs> so in celebrating 50 years, we thought we'd talk today about and suddenly as we looked at our series over the time, we spoke about the wilderness experience. We spoke about character. We spoke about reflection. We spoke about purpose and vision over the last 50 episodes. And today we thought, okay, we stopped the last time about Joshua before taking them into the promised land. And we decided, okay, they came as suddenly. And many people are going through experiences where they are in the wilderness and they are waiting for their suddenly. But we need to understand that when your suddenly comes, you need to be prepared. Before we say, Lord, we're waiting and waiting for our suddenly, we prepared. Are we ready for what is to come? Because when God brings the suddenly, 
Suddenly, we have to change many things. Suddenly, there's a shift. Everything in our lives are totally different, a big shift. So let's understand before we go into the experiences of Joshua and Paul and Silas of what happened when they went through their suddenness. What does suddenly mean? We want to define suddenly so that if you are trusting God for a major shift in your life and you are waiting for your suddenly to change your circumstances, are you ready for your suddenly. What does suddenly mean? Angelina, the Oxford G uh, Dictionary finds suddenly as unexpectedly. Wow. And a Merriam Webster Dictionary defined suddenly as quickly. As quickly. Quickly, just quickly. It happened. Wow, quickly it happened. So if we are waiting for God to turn up and show up on something that we've been waiting for quite a while, are we ready for that suddenness? Are we ready for that quickly? Because when that quickly happens, we cannot be doing the same old, same old. And a lot of times people who are waiting get conformed to the waiting habits and don't know how to shift into the quickly, into what to now when this suddenly happens. So I love what you're saying, quickly, unexpected. I love what the Greek word for suddenly is. In Acts 2.2, suddenly they came from a sky, a sound like the rushing of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. That suddenly, in that scripture, in Greek is aphno, which means unaware which means unexpected, like you said in the dictionary. And then the root word is aphanus, which means invisible, unseen, hidden. Your suddenlies happen when you least expect. That is why it's invisible, unseen, hidden. Because when it shows up, you will see it, but it's currently hidden. God has prepared your suddenly. It's hidden, waiting to appear at the right, right time. <laughs> The root word, as we look into a furnace, there's another word attached to it, and it's called phaino, which means to lighten. That is show, appear, seem, be seen, shine. This is it, Gospel for Grampian listeners. When God brings you suddenly, it is lightened, it shines, it shows, it appears, you can see it. Your suddenlies are visible. It is noticeable. And then the Greek word of phaino, which is now the root word of uh, suddenly is phos. And it means to shine or make manifest. So when God brings our suddenlies, it is illuminated. People can notice it. It is so sudden and unexpected and quick, yet so noticeable because it is evident to everybody, everybody. So when it is evident, are we ready for it? Are we ready for that illumination, for that suddenly that is now hidden and suddenly appears? Can we cope with that suddenly that God has got for us? Let's look at another word suddenly in the Old Testament, and that is 2 Chronicles 29, 36. Then Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced that God had prepared the people since the events took place so suddenly. The Hebrew word for suddenly in this context is a patom. And this suddenly says suddenness, immediately. The root word is pita, which is instant, instantly, very. It is instant. There's no delay. It's unexpected. It's immediate. God suddenly comes immediately. When he has prepared you suddenly, it is hidden waiting to appear. It happens immediately, instantly. No delay, not a second delay. Talk to us, Myrtle. Are we ever ready to listen when God speaks gospel for Grampian listeners? Let's look at the corporate discussion God has with Moses and the leadership. Numbers 12 verse 4, Yahweh spoke suddenly to Moses, to Aaron, and to Miriam. You three, come out to the tent of meeting. The three of them came out. What if they was not in tune with the voice of God, Angelina? Wow. Would they have corporately responded to the call of God at that moment? 
missing our moment of corporate boardroom discussion with God because the leadership don't have listening ears. Ouch, Angelina, if you don't listen to the voice of God, you have a big problem. And and you know what I love with what you're saying now, Myrtle, we all have a suddenly from the Lord for an expectation for ourselves. But what about the suddenly when the Lord wants to get our attention on something? Are we are we missing out gospel for Grampian listeners on the suddenlies where God wants to talk to us in important matters, not just we having an expectation. A lot of times people have an expectation waiting on the Lord for their suddenlies, but are their ears, I love what Myrtle's saying, are their ears in tune when God suddenly wants to talk? I mean, we are in a business and God wants to have a corporate discussion with us as a team. If you're a business or if you're in a uh, um in a corporate environment or in a church and you are amongst people, can God communicate with all of you suddenly? Are you all in tune with God that when he calls you out, you are hearing him and can respond immediately? Because the word of God says in Numbers 12, 4, Yahweh spoke suddenly. He didn't, it, the, the Bible doesn't say here, uh, they created an atmosphere, an appointment and an environment for God to talk to them. It just says here, Yahweh spoke to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam suddenly. And what did they do? They responded. They responded immediately. They were obedient. Right. You have to be obedient to the voice of God. So, so one of the observations when we studied the word suddenly, we realized that God not only suddenly brings your, your, your blessing to you when you least expect it and it suddenly appears, God doesn't just like... Um, Joseph, suddenly he was called to come and give an interpretation to, to Pharaoh, but God also suddenly needs to chat to you about important matters, not just something that you need to receive, but something that is pertaining to the will of God and the strategies of God on the earth. Are you having listening ears to hear as a corporate team? Because as a corporate team, if you don't have listening ears, it will affect God's corporate decisions and strategies for your organization, for your church, for your team, for your husband and wife, for your family. That is so true, Angelina. God's voice you must be so tuned in so that you can listen to his voice. You must hear that small voice in your mind when God is speaking to you. And that is why it's so important, Gospel for Grampian listeners, that your teams walk in unity. Walk in unity and be tuned to the Spirit of God, being walking in the Spirit and not fulfilling the lust of the flesh, so that when God can begin to say, hey Myrtle, hey Angelina, hey Karina, hey Sam, hey Ruth, I want to talk to you, come to the tent of meeting, we can say, yes, Lord, we're coming. Not one hears God and the other doesn't, so only one comes and the others don't. Corporate uh, anointings are relevant, and therefore corporate hearing the Lord is important. God talks, are we are we ever ready to hear him? Let's talk Myrtle, a little bit about Joshua. We left off in the last few weeks about Joshua, and God said, Joshua, you're going to enter, uh, you're going to take the people into the promised land. That was a big suddenly. Let's talk about the before and the after on the suddenly and how they responded to the suddenly. Angelina, I want to share the most successful account of a suddenly experience in the Bible. This is when Joshua led the people into the promised land. It came at a suddenly. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its kings and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when they hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight 
before him. So Angelina, you know, they were obedient. The instructions instructions were so perfect, and he did exactly what God told him to do. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed and march around the city, and let him who is armed advance before the Ark of the Lord. Gospel for Grampian listeners, carefully do this suddenly. So, the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpet. Gospel for Grampian listeners, listen carefully to this suddenly. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets. Angelina, now this is the most pivotal part of how to respond to God suddenly. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpets and the people shouted with great shout, the walls fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city, and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both men, women, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey, with the edge of the sword. Notice the action, the energy, the courage, the strength, the determination to take what belongs to them, Angelina. Now, let's see what's going to happen now. But Joshua had said to the two men who helped, um, had spied out the country, go into the Harlot's house and from there bring out the woman and all that she has, as she swore to her. And the young men who had been spies went in and brought out Rahab her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. So they brought out all her relatives and left them outside the camp of Israel. But they burnt the city and all that was in with fire. Only the silver and the gold and the vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua spared Rahab the harlot her father's household, and all that she had. So she dwelt in Israel, Angelina, because she hid the messenger who Joshua sent to spy Jericho. Then Joshua charged them at the time, saying, First be the man before the Lord who rises up and builds the city Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with his firstborn, and with the youngest he shall set up the gates. Wow. Angelina, they were so, so obedient to what God told Joshua, that they did absolutely everything that Joshua uh, told them. And he spared the harlot. Yes. Can you believe it? And you A know, prostitute woman was saved. Yes. But what I loved about all of this account is that when the suddenly came, they did not know how God was going to bring the walls down. But when the walls came down, they knew exactly to go in and plunder. There was obedience. I love what you said. There was instructions and they obeyed the instructions. And they had an expectancy that God would deliver. When we don't have an expectancy that God would deliver, when we don't have faith that God would deliver, then when it suddenly happens, we miss it. You know, they talk about the Kairos moment. The Kairos moment is your suddenly. And if they were not ready and they were not armed to go in and plunder, they would have given a little bit of delay because of not being ready and expectant. They would have lost because the nation that we're inside would have thought, okay, they are surprised as us about the war coming down so we can go target them. But the way they were so ready that when the wars came tumbling down, their readiness to go in and plunder and take over intimidated the people that lived there. 
Because the Bible says that the people that lived in Jericho were a strong nation. They were strong and they were powerful and they were successful and they had it all together. And if this team that knew, if they didn't believe that God was going to bring the walls down for them and they sat back and they were afraid, they would have not have been able to plunder. And those people inside would have seen the fear and uh, uh, you know, responded by plundering our very Israel nation. So having a suddenly, experiencing a suddenly from God requires us to do our part in terms of, Lord, we believe you. We we believe that that which you have promised will come to pass. And if you like the tribe of Issachar that knew the times and the seasons, will be ready when the time of suddenly for your breakthrough to happen, you are ready. We have to discern the times and the seasons because Joshua and the Israel nation discerned the time and the season. Therefore, they knew when they were in front of the Jericho wall, it was their time. Their time of suddenly is here to conquer and enter their promised land. Therefore, they were ready. They were prepared. They were equipped. And they never had to say, Joshua, remind me again. Like you said, they were full of energy, right? Amen. And, um, you know, uh, Angelina, what is so beautiful, obedience is better than sacrifice. They were obedient to the word of God, the voice, small voice of God. Right. Absolutely. They were obedient. Joshua was obedient. And Joshua, as the new leader that took over, the people that were under his care listened to him, whether it made sense, logic or not. They just listened because they knew Joshua heard God. And therefore they said, Joshua, if you're telling us not to go with arms around the wall and just have the worship there, we're going to do whatever you tell us to do. They, they had faith in the visionary and therefore they could conquer. When you don't have faith in the visionary, you are going to have a challenge in obeying because I love what Myrtle has been saying all along, obedience, obedience to the word of God and the voice of God and obedience to submission. You know, God always leads a person to take us into our promised land. If we do not have faith in the visionary, we are not going to enter our promised land. And so what the visionary will tell you is so in conflict to what logic tells you. I mean, I think about Joshua. Here's a man that is armed for war. And God says, I don't want you to use your strength or the army strength. I want you to do what I'm telling you to do. Good praise and worship, and be silent, and go around that Jericho. And on the last day, go seven times, and make a shout of victory. That was the obedience. There was no logic to it. Imagine if those Israelites under there are going and saying, this leader is crazy. He's not telling us to do it the logical way. He's telling us to take worship in there. How on earth is worship going to bring the walls down? They believed in the visionary model. And the visionary believed in God and heard the voice of God. And therefore, God brought down the wall. And they knew that now it's time for them to do their part because Joshua gave them instructions. So gospel for Grampian listeners. Obey the leaders that God put over you. If God has put you in a place, believe and support the visionary. They know what God is telling them to do. Your job is like Myrtle says, just obey. Obey, obey, obey. And listen to all their instructions. I love what she also said. They carefully obeyed all the instructions before they entered the promised land. Joshua told them, do this, do that. Don't do this, don't do that. And please be careful when you go plunder. Watch that scarlet uh, uh, thread. We promised Rahab we're going to save her and her family because she protected our team. So please be on guard and don't go and plunder her stuff. And Joshua kept to his promise amidst everything that happened whatever was prepared and planned and promised and who had to be safe in that region they kept to their word so when you go into your promised land gospel for grampian listeners remember the promises you made to people and do not break it god will not honor you in your place of promise if you cannot honor your commitment be a people of integrity in your promised land okay i'm now myrtle going to talk about a suddenly that happened in the new testament and that suddenly was when god opened the door in the prison for Paul and Silas. So this is what happened. Paul and Silas were imprisoned for delivering a slave girl 
who was doing fortune telling. She had a spirit of divination in her and her employer saw the gift of fortune telling in her and they used that to gain wealth. And so when she came across Paul and Silas, what she spoke about them was true. And however, Paul knew that it wasn't her speaking, but the demon spirit in her that was tormenting them. So he then rebuked the demon spirit and the demon spirit left the young lady. And when the demon spirit left her, her employer got very upset because now she had no ability anymore to do fortune telling. So then, so what they did was her employers went and complained about Paul and Silas. And, they, and it says here in, in Acts 16, 19, and these employers that were upset with Paul and Silas wrought Paul and Silas to the magistrate and said, these men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city and they teach customs which are not lawful for us being Roman to receive or observe. Th these laws they're teaching is not for us. We don't want to observe it. The multitude rose up together against them, tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with the rods. And when they had laid down many stripes on them, they threw Paul and Silas into the prison, commanding the jailer to keep them secure. They couldn't move. They couldn't get out. They were fastened even in their prison. But this is what there suddenly happened. Listen to this, right? In verse 25, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep, seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he knew now if the prison doors are open and everybody's gone, he's going to be killed because he's responsible to make sure that everybody stays in prison. But now he doesn't know what happened. He doesn't know how this happened. And so he says, now I'm going to get in trouble, so I'm going to kill myself. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm, for we are still here. We are all here. Even though the prison door opened, nobody left. We are all here. Then, Paul, then he called for a light and ran in and fell down trembling in front of Paul and Silas. This is now the prison warden. He said, give a, he called for a light. They put the light on. He went down and he humbled himself by Paul and Silas. But, and, and, and he brought... He brought them out and he said, sirs, he took them out of the prison. He actually escorted them. They were still sitting in the prison, even though they were freed, right? He brought them out and he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him in the house. And he took them the same hour of the night washed their stripes, and immediately he and his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. So this is what happened, Gospel for Grampian listeners. When these prisoners were set free because the angels of God opened for all the prisoners to be delivered, this uh, prison warden escorted Paul and Silas out and said, come to my house. My family and I want to be saved. And after they got saved, what happened? They gave Paul and Silas food. This is what happens when you are in prison. God gives us suddenly. When you are set free, other people notice the suddenly. Because why? It is unaware. It is unexpected. Yet it is noticeable. It is wow. It brightens up everybody and suddenly everybody wants to come to the light of what just happened. You are a prisoner and God has now set you free. And in that freedom, they get to have a good meal and they've been set free. And through them being imprisoned, somebody and his family got saved. So your suddenly doesn't only benefit you, Gospel for Grampian. It also changes the people around you that experience the suddenly that God does for you. Myrtle, talk to us about the effects of suddenly in the storms. 
Uh, Gospel for Grampian listeners, just listen to God suddenly. John 6, 16 to 21. Now when the evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and went over to the sea towards Capernaum. And it was already dark, and Jesus had not come to them. Then the sea arose because a great wind was blowing. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near to the boat. And they were afraid. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they willingly received him into the boat. And immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. Angelina, you know what? If God is in your presence, all your anxiety, everything, your if you're afraid, anxiety, whatever happens to you, you uh, uh, become calm, like the disciples became calm in the boat. And also what is so exciting about this, the minute Jesus came in, they suddenly got to the other side. They suddenly got to the other side. Dear Gospel for Grampian listeners, when God is in your circumstances, when there's a storm coming up against you, believe the Lord that he will either help you go through it or he will take you to the other side. Two accounts in the word of God where they were in a storm. The one storm they went through the other side, the other storm, God stilled the boat, uh, stilled the storm. So we can go through experiences where Jesus will sleep in the storm because he needs you to go through it and he'll go through it with you. And like Myrtle says, you will have peace and calmness in it because you can see that Christ is in your boat. And there's other storms where God will still it and suddenly you're on the other side. That is the goodness of the Lord. That is the goodness of the Lord. I want to go back to the story of the day of Pentecost, when the sound of the rushing mighty wind, suddenly there was a sound of the rushing mighty wind that came upon the 120 disciples. Here they were waiting. They were waiting 50 days, 49 days gone past. Jesus has gone to heaven. Jesus promised that he will send them another comforter. And he said, you cannot go and start your mission until the comforter comes. Before that, you cannot be released. And the comforter came on the 50th day. They were waiting and waiting every day, not knowing when it was going to happen. And suddenly on the 50th day, the day of Pentecost, the day of Jubilee, the day that the the Jewish people celebrate Pentecost, suddenly a mighty rushing wind came upon the 120 disciples. They began to speak in a language that they never thought they could, like a A heat came over their tongues and they began to speak. Some of them spoke in languages that foreigners who came to the celebration heard and said, but these people are not from where we come from, but they speak our language. And so many people got saved that day because these 120 disciples in the upper room were having an expectancy. They were expecting something from the Lord. While it tarried, it happened. And when it came, they were fired up, they were ready, and they had a word in season, and many thousands got saved that day because they were ready for their Kairos moment. God promised, and they waited patiently. Are you gospel for Grampian listeners having an expectation from God? Wait on it. It shall speak. Do not lose hope. Imagine if the 120 had lost hope and didn't stay in that upper room. They would have lost their Kairos moment. They would have lost their Kairos moment. Imagine those hundred, those children that were under 20 years that Joshua, God was going to use with Joshua to enter the promised land. Imagine if they were like the complaining, moaning, groaning parents that had the Egypt mentality. If they did not have a new mindset, and believe God, and experience the goodness of God, and believe it for themselves in the wilderness, they would have missed the Kairos moment of entering to the promised land. So it is so important for us to have an expectancy that God is God's promises is yes and amen. Don't miss out your suddenlies. If God has promised you something, be patient. Wait upon the Lord. I again say, wait upon the Lord, because when you wait on the Lord, that very thing you've been waiting for, you will see it with your eyes. 
It is sudden. It is expectant. It is hidden at the moment. Cry and see your promises from the Lord are hidden. And at the right time, it will happen. And when it happens, will you have the tenacity, the readiness, like the the, the Israel nation, to enter in and respond positively to your suddenly. You need to have a proactive mindset when it comes to expecting from the Lord, not a reactive mindset. Imagine, I'm thinking about the, the Israel nation. When God said to them, do this, go around that Jericho wall, Joshua had already prepared them and said, be ready. Imagine if they were not proactive in readiness, but reactive. When that wall fell down, they would have said, Joshua, what now? What should we do? Should we go? By the time Joshua finished talks to them, the people on the other side would have come and defeated them. So when you have a promise from the Lord, be proactive as in believe God for it and have an expectancy so that when this suddenly happens, you can be like Paul and Silas and be ready to take action. Don't delay by being negative. You cannot be reactive mindset when it comes to believing God for his promises. You need to be prepared and ready for that breakthrough. That's true, Angelina. And I just thank God for the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that came upon them. And uh, what the Bible said about suddenly, uh, Acts 12 verse 7, suddenly an angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the cell. And striking Peter on the side, he woke him and said, Rise quickly, instantly, and the chains drop off his wrist. God knows when it's your suddenly moment. He knows when you're obedient, because then you do exactly what he wants you to do. I absolutely love what you're saying. Peter had a heart of obedience. Therefore, when the angel of the Lord appeared, he quickly knew what to do. I mean, you are so spot on. You, When you have an expectancy of suddenlies, you need to have a heart of obedience because God's suddenlies are supernatural. If you're not obedient, you will question the reality of what's happening and you will miss your moment. You will miss your moment. I mean, look here in Acts 12, 8 to 12. After the angel appeared to him and poked him on the right side and said, quickly, quickly, wake up. This is what he did. The angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Obedience doesn't question the supernatural. Obedience just does it. Peter did so. Then the angel said, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but Peter had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself and they went through it. And when they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Now get this. Suddenly the angel appeared. Peter didn't question. He obeyed. He believed in supernatural. He believed in God and he obeyed. Even though he thought he was having a vision, vision, he just went with it. And then as he came out right out of the street, one length away from the prison street, the angel left him. And I love what it said in verse 11. Then Then Peter came to himself. He now woke up. He came to himself and he says, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen to him. Because remember, they were, he was going to be the next to be killed, right? And in verse 12, when this dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, and called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. And Peter knocked on the door entrance, and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. And when she recognized Peter's voice, she, she was so overjoyed, she she ran back without opening it and explained, Peter is at the door. So this is it, gospel for Grampian listeners. When God does a suddenly, we can behave like Peter. We can behave like Paul and Silas. We can behave like Joshua uh, and his men and be proactive and be ready and know and expect that God is good, that God is supernatural. We must believe in supernatural because if we don't believe in supernatural, I can imagine Paul and Silas when the earthquake happened, they would have been afraid. 
They would have thought this is a world catastrophe. They wouldn't have been uh, thought that this is the hand of God. That is so true, Angelina. Of course, uh, when God, like you said, uh, uh, want you to do this suddenly, you can't go and ponder and think, what, what, what am I now going to do? You must suddenly do whatever you have to do and go for it. And 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 you you have to be your mind has to be ready and prepared for it. Because again, I'm thinking about when the walls came tum- tumbling down. If they didn't have an expectancy that the Lord was going to help them enter in, they would have been afraid of the walls coming down. They would have not known what action to take, but they had readiness. No, God didn't tell them he was going to bring the walls down. God didn't tell them What was going to happen? He just said, do as I tell you. And they expected God to do something. And that expectation and the preparation made them ready that when it happened in a suddenly, whatever God was going to do, they knew that they got instructions what to do when they entered in. And I think about um, Peter and, uh, sorry, Paul and Silas. Nobody told them that this is what God was going to do. They just praised the Lord in the prison. But because they knew their God, Myrtle, when this suddenly happened, which was the earthquake, they weren't traumatized to think, oh my gosh, this is a natural disaster. Protect yourself. Hide. Is everybody safe? What's going to happen? They believed that this was a suddenly from the Lord. Therefore, they said to the prison warder, don't worry. Don't go kill yourself thinking that you're going to be in trouble because now everybody's going to leave because now the earthquake has caused the prison to be open. We are still here. And when they got out, they were ready to minister to him because they knew that God is a God of miracles, signs, and wonders. When we know our God, we will expect suddenlies. Yes, Angelina, most definitely. You are waiting for that suddenly, but you must respond immediately. You can't stand and think, what am I going to do next? You must do and run. So I want to ponder again to, you know, this last experience that we had with Peter in prison. You know, Gospel for Grampian listeners, you know, Peter was unfairly imprisoned. Joseph was unfairly imprisoned. Paul and Silas was unfairly imprisoned. But every single one of these men had an expectation from the living God because they knew their God. I mean, before we even go there, let's actually go even one step further. The three Hebrew boys, they said, King Nebuchadnezzar, Whatever you want to do, even if it means you kill us, we will rather you bring judgment upon us versus us go and bow down to your statue. There is only one God and we must bow down to that God. That brings us back to Myrtle's statement this whole time around obedience. I'm going to obey you, God, whether it hurts me or not. Even though I'm not guilty and I must go to prison, I obey you and you are going to protect me. I obey you, Lord, and I'm not going to bow down to these idols. And if it means that I'm going to be killed in the, in, the, in the name of obedience to you, I'm going to do it. And look what happened. Suddenly, the king says to them, put the fire stronger and put these three men into the fire. That was a suddenly out. But they didn't say, stop, stop, stop. I, I, I'll bow down now because I don't want to get burned. They believed God that even in that difficult time, in that very challenging situation, they're going to obey God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You can pray seven times a day like these three Hebrew boys. But if you cannot obey, then your sacrifice does not count because works without obedience does not show your commitment to the Lord. These men prayed and they obeyed, obeyed to the point of death in the fire. And before they went in the fire, the very uh, soldier that escorted them into the fire burnt because the fire was so hot. Yet they still obediently went in. And look what happened. It suddenly happened. They began to dance in the fire. They believed in signs, miracles, and wonders. When they were in the fire, I would have expected them, Myrtle, to go, 
my gosh, I cannot cope. Oh my gosh. Their mindset could have said, I'm in the fire. I'm in trouble. I'm going to perish. But they were dancing in the fire because they believed God because God was in there with them. Just like Paul and Silas, before his suddenly breakthrough of getting out of prison, they prayed in prison, yet they danced in the time of difficulty. And it suddenly happened because they knew, God, you are good. If I'm going to do anything out of obedience to you, no matter what is going to happen around me, my suddenly is going to come because my God is faithful and he is good. He is good. That's how they believe in God. They had they believed in God and they had faith. So gospel for Grampian listeners, you know, as we speak about suddenly is what we've been waiting for, God made a way. I want to encourage you that don't lose sight of your relationship with the Lord because every breakthrough is a suddenly. And if you don't have a relationship with the Lord, you will not know how to respond to your suddenlies. Because when we're reading now about Peter, upon Paul, upon about Silas, and upon the, the disciples, the disciples were in the boat and a storm happened. Jesus came onto the boat and immediately they got to the other side. When you are beaten to the Lord and you are faithful, then you must expect signs, miracles, and wonders. Amen. You must believe that what I've been waiting for, my eyes see, my ears hear, because God is faithful. That which he has promised, he will show it through. Gospel for Grampian listeners, no matter how long or how hard it has been, God has a suddenly for you, a sudden breakthrough as we wait and trust God. He will move us into our suddenly. All your prayers was not in vain. God's promise is yes and amen. And his word is above his name. Absolutely. I love what you said, Myrtle. And so gospel for Grampian listeners, as we leave you today, we leave you with a song. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass. The word of God says, write your vision, make it plain, and it will speak. Your vision will speak. You have to believe God and have an expectancy that God has a good plan for you, plans to prosper you and to give you a hope and a good future. Believe God for suddenlies. Great exploits come with suddenlies. So from Myrtle and I, As we end our beautiful 50th episode, we want you to enjoy the song. Ta-ta, please be blessed with the song. What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. On your wedding day, you're going to sing that. Can you see what the Lord has done? When you walk into that property, can you see what the Lord has done? When that healing happens, what we've been praying for. Has brought to pass. See what the Lord has done.
I'll just sing it to someone. Say, see what the Lord has done. Can you see? See what the Lord has done. What we've waited for has come to pass. Say, my eyes have seen, my ears have heard. I have seen what the Lord has done. But lately I've been waiting for, He has brought it to pass. Oh, my God. 